Pop quiz! Who was the first ever same-sex cartoon couple to ever be shown on Nickelodeon? Good morning, girlfriends, boyfriends, and everyone else in between. Welcome to LGBT History Cartoon Character Week. You can watch the other videos linked in the playlist below. So, a few weeks ago, I was scrolling through Tumblr and I see people going crazy over Korra and Asami, and I was like, what is this? So I had to watch it. And it's interesting because Korra and Asami have very limited interactions throughout the entire series, so it kind of came as a shock to some people. Their relationship comes out of nowhere in book four, which wouldn't be as surprising because the entire internet built the uh, finest of ships. But apparently it turns out that the creative team behind this animation had this plan from the beginning. The Legend of Korra follows the precedent set by Avatar The Last Airbender. Both shows explore complex, dark, and rather adult issues. Avatar does it mainly with racism and Korra is mainly about terrorism. With a hint of economic issues, gender, sexuality, and expression. Both girl characters are bisexual. Asami winds up getting into a relationship with both Mako, who is a male character, and Korra much later on in the series. The age chart at the beginning is very important as well as each character's environment. Korra is the Avatar. World more in a few years than most Avatars did during their lifetimes. The reincarnation of a balancing spirit who can skillfully manipulate all four elements and is tasked with establishing and maintaining order in this world. While Asami on the other hand is the heiress of a Fortune 500 company basically. It's called Future Industries. In book one, chapter one, viewers are introduced to four-year-old little Korra and her parents' home in the South Pole. And then we quickly cut to 17-year-old Korra, also still on the South Pole, training to be the Avatar. There was a massive wall surrounding the complex, military patrolmen everywhere. But this isn't meant to control or oppress her, this is actually meant to protect her, because being the Avatar, especially at such a young age, is a dangerous job. When Korra travels to Republic City, she befriends Mako and his brother, Bolin. Bolin is immediately taken by Korra, offering any small gifts that he can afford, flirting with her consistently. He's basically the kind of character that you would root for, but he's only a friend in Korra's eyes. She doesn't even acknowledge his advances as advances. It is about this time that Asami comes into the picture. By running Mako over with her mo motorcycle? Is that what happens? Really? And they dated after that? When Korra finds out, she does seem a little bit jealous, but it's not the type of romantic jealous, it's more of the type of he was my friend first jealous. And I think Korra confuses friendship with attention and infatuation. You can tell that the two of them care for each other very deeply, but they're just not meant to be lovers, which sparks an amazing self-discovery process. Being the Avatar didn't really allow Korra much time to navigate social circles and explore her emotions. Asami, on the other hand, would have had all the time she needed, and her smooth transition from apologetic accident causer to suave flirt is concrete evidence that she knows what she likes and is comfortable getting it. Asami and Korra do become friends despite dating the same guy previously. Sloppy seconds, anyone? And during her recovery, Asami is the only person that Korra communicates with. She told Asami that it was easier to talk to her than anyone else, ever. Asami was the only one that can get through to Korra when she was expressing her doubts of the world even needing an avatar. All of this culminates in the very last moments of the season finale when the two of them go into the spirit world on a vacation together holding hands into the sunset. Everything, all of Korra's interactions with others, with Asami, all has pointed to this. It wouldn't have made sense for the two women to fall for each other at first sight. That doesn't really fit either of their personalities. Instead, it develops slowly, naturally, and is definitely not exploited for the views or for press, which makes me so happy. It's just presented and left alone. If you guys did enjoy this video or did enjoy the Legend of Korra finale, make sure you go down there and give it a big like, and I will see you guys back here for Bisexual Guy Week in two weeks. We skip a week and then we'll be back with another themed week. I will see you guys then. Look inside into the moon. I love you. Bye!